Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Widow Podcast. I see this question a lot. I get asked it a lot and I thought it would be good to do a podcast on it because I remember asking this question myself. My husband has died. What do I do now? Where does this leave me? Where do I go from here? How do I deal with this? So many questions. Now, I'm not talking practically here. Um, in, you know, I'm not going to go through how to arrange a funeral or, you know, legally what we have to do with the will or paying off mortgages and finances. I'm talking about you as a person with your grief, because there are few things in life that are as painful as the death of a spouse. You won't know how you're going to survive this, or even if you want to sometimes, because it is just so bad. We are not aware of grief in this intensity. We, we don't understand it. People don't talk about it. We are not prepared for it. We don't know how to navigate it at all. You may have had previous losses. You may have been through grief before. So you, you may have a, an understanding of it. However, you, you know, from, from what I've seen, from what I've read, from my own experience, you, you know, every every loss is unique isn't it like the, the it it's all everything's different and that the loss of a spouse is incredibly unique and your world shatters into a million pieces you don't recognize anything anymore you don't experience anything in the same way anymore you don't think the same. You don't feel the same. You don't dress the same. You don't eat the same. You don't sleep the same. Like it just impacts every corner of our universe. Like how, where do we even start? How do we even begin to process the enormity of what has happened? Now, you are going to feel so many feelings. Grief is a natural, common response to loss. This is something that we have been doing forever. Like we have been dying forever. This, this isn't new, yet we still don't seem to understand what it's all about. Now, to me, it's, it's, it's an umbrella term. You know, grief isn't one thing. Grief is like an amalgamation of all the most uncomfortable, painful, scary, powerful feelings you have ever felt in your life, all at once. And it is overwhelming. You're gonna feel fear, you're gonna feel anger, you're gonna feel resentment, jealousy, bitterness, guilt, shame, depression, fatigue. Just it's all it's all going to come at you, everything, in one way or another. You, you know, you may not be angry at your person, you may be angry at the people around you. You you may not feel guilt for you know what other feel, people feel guilty about in terms of caring for your person you, you might feel guilt for something that you didn't do like it it's 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 all going to show up but it's going to show up in in different ways for you and the fact that we know so little about it is very scary for us because all of a sudden we're thrown into this world we don't understand we didn't ask to go into, and we feel very vulnerable. And the fact is, most people around you 
won't understand it either. They won't know what to do, how to cope, what you're feeling. Like they are as blind as we are trying to figure this out. It's going to impact you on every level, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, socially, like like the, the brain fog. You won't be able to think straight. Socially, you, you know, you, you're, you're not going to feel the same in social situations. It's all going to be very different for you. Emotionally, we've already talked about everything that you're going to be feeling. Physically, personally, I, I was shocked at how physical grief was. Honestly, <laughs> I thought I thought I was dying at times. I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought I was having some kind of brain aneurysm because the physical pain in my body just felt too much sometimes. And when the, the, the doctors told me it was anxiety, I, I mean, I'd never suffered from anxiety before, but I was like, this isn't anxiety. This, this, I, I can feel this in my body. This, this isn't anxiety. This is, there's something wrong with me. And there wasn't. So all of these things are going to have a, a huge impact on you, all whilst maybe trying to work whilst maybe trying to raise children that are also grieving, whilst trying to do all the widow admin that we have to do when somebody dies, while still trying to be who you were before, trying to be a, a friend, a daughter, a sister, all of, all of those roles and identities that we have, that we feel we've kind of got to continue with, because we're trying desperately to cling on to what feels normal, what 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 feels the same to us, like a safe space, because nothing feels the same anymore. So, you know, for some people, work is an absolute saviour because that gets them through the day. For others, they can't cope. I personally didn't go back to work, but I know people go back to work quite quickly and, it, and they believe that that is the only thing that has got them through. These things can change. Some people go back to work quickly and then they stop after a while. Other people don't go back to work and then they pick something up further down the line. Now, <clears throat> remember that everything that you feel is valid. OK, you're going to feel everything I've mentioned. You're going to feel scared. You're going to feel vulnerable. You're going to feel anxious. You're going to feel exhausted. You're going to feel sad. But please just remember that everything you are feeling is not permanent. You might withdraw from people. You know, you're, you're going to be very forgetful. You're, you're going to struggle mentally your mental capacity is is going to lessen whilst you try and process the shock the trauma the grief but over time these things will evolve these feelings these emotions they will change and they will become lighter to carry they will become easier to live with grief it doesn't go away. You're always going to miss your person. You're always going to grieve your person. But I don't believe that grief always means pain. It does sometimes. And in, in the beginning, in the early days, it, it, it's just constant pain. 100%. You, you know, that that's, that's how it shows up. That, that raw, awful pain that takes over your whole body, that is grief. But it will evolve and it will change over time. That time is different for everybody. However, what you're feeling now, it isn't gonna be like this forever. But it does take a long time. Just do what is right for you, okay? Now I know we don't always feel like we know what is right for us, but you'll know what's not right instinctively. Like, just remember that you you do instinctively know how to do this. 
But because we lose so much confidence and because we we lose our way, we've lost our person, like our self-esteem just disappears. We, we don't know who we are. We're kind of stumbling around in the dark with a 10 stone backpack on our back, trying to walk through treacle. OK, like all of this is, is really tough. It's really tough. But you do know how to take that next step. You do know how to, you know, reduce the weight that you're carrying in that bag. You do know how to step towards the light. You will see it. You will find it. You will seek it because you instinctively want to survive this. Your brain wants to survive this. Now, it won't always feel like that. But as a human being, you are designed for survival. So you are going to look for ways to survive this. Now, that's not always going to be immediately obvious to you, but it will present itself along the way. And you will know what feels right and what doesn't. The answer will come. It may not come at the exact moment that you want it to come, but it will come. And we have to almost learn to trust in the process. And if you don't have the answer, like just, just wait. One thing I had to learn in my journey was patience. I'm still not brilliant at it, you know, and, and we do live in a very fast paced world where we want everything yesterday. We want to resolve all our problems. We want the answers here and now, but it doesn't quite work like that in grief. We have to learn to be patient. And if you can be patient you will figure it out. You will find your way. This is about you. Like, don't don't listen to society. Don't listen to, to well-meaning friends and family. You know, if something doesn't feel right to you, that's not for you. There's no right or wrong way in this. There's no one size fits all. Like, we can all talk about our experiences and what helped us. And, and there are certain things that will help you that will help everyone. But for the most part, we have to figure out how to do this ourselves and you 100% will I know you will for starters you're listening to this so you are already looking for the light you are already trying to find ways to reduce the weight in that backpack so just keep going keep doing what you're doing but trust in you okay if something doesn't feel right to you that then don't don't do it that way it's absolutely fine always do this in the way that that feels right to you and, and instinctively in your gut find people that you can grieve with a place where you can have your grief witnessed where you can feel heard and seen for the most part and people are wonderful and they want to help you but they're going to try and fix you and that's going to make you feel like you're broken okay and and that that kind of is is, is disempowering and it, and it doesn't feel right to us you know when we're talking to somebody about how we're feeling and they're trying to find solutions to our problems and and grief isn't a problem to be fixed it's a feeling, it's a lot of feelings that need to be felt in order for us to heal. That is the only way. You have to feel it to heal it. You have to work through it all. But it can get, it can get a little bit frustrating when people are constantly trying to give you answers or solutions to your problems. Now, this, this isn't a problem that we can fix. This is something we have to work through in time. And to find people that can 100% understand where you're at, that get what you're going through because they have experienced it themselves, that's powerful. You know, in my membership, in my 12-month group coaching program, the, it, the power, the support, the connection that happens in those sessions, when people come together that are going through something similar is like nothing else I've ever seen in my life. Now, not only are these people going through something similar, they are all seeking to find 
a better way through it. They are all wanting to find a more positive way through their grieving journey. And, and they want to create something meaningful and good for themselves after they have lost a life partner. Now, if you're one of those people, by all means, come and join one of my groups. Like, they're, they are incredible. They are amazing. You can, you can check it out on my website, karensutton.co.uk, my membership. It's called Remember and my 12 month group coaching program, Finding Hope in Widowhood. They are both powerful. They are both very nurturing, supportive, safe spaces where you can express your grief, where you can feel supported and held and heard and understood. And to find people that will walk with you for a while whilst you figure it out. Now, if that's not right for you, Find something locally. You know, my groups are, they are worldwide. It doesn't matter where you are in your journey. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You are welcome. It is all done over Zoom and it is incredible. You might want to find something more local. You might find a, a widow support group or just a grief group. You might find a grief group near you with, with different types of grief. But I, I would highly, highly invite you recommend to, to to go and seek people that have walked your path or are currently walking your path it re and i'm not saying this you know i'm not saying you have to come and join mine join some join somebody else's or, or you know find somebody that you resonate with that you connect with that you 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 know offers you that hope for your future and, and, and go follow them, go find them, go do what they're doing, you know, and, and adapt it to your own way. But we've got to talk about it. What we keep in causes us harm. But what we let out allows us to, to release what we're feeling and work through the pain that we're going through. Let your feelings guide you. They are information if you listen to them. Now, we're not often used to doing this. We are very, very good at distracting ourselves, at numbing our feelings, at boxing them up and pushing them away, thinking, oh, don't worry, it'll sort itself out in time. And we can think a bit like that with grief. We can kind of think, oh, you know, time heals all wounds. Yes, maybe. Maybe if you've broken a bone or you've you know, grazed your skin, time will heal. But time alone does not heal wounds of the heart. We have to work through it, okay? But your feelings are giving you so much information. And if you can learn to sit with them, be with them, explore them, acknowledge them, name them, feel them, that will tell you what you need. And when you can figure that out, you can go do that thing. You might need a good meal. You might need to sleep. You might need to connect with your loved one. You might need to spend time with somebody that you, that you love that's still here. You might need to go and watch, you know, a, a, a comedy series on Netflix to, to just, you know, give you some respite from it. There's, there's so many things we can do for ourselves, okay? We have to open our heart and our mind to new ways and new things because everything's different. But if you can tune into your feelings and what's going on in your body, you will learn how to self-soothe. You will learn to understand what will help you get through these emotions, these feelings that you're experiencing. Be kind to yourself. You're going to hear this a lot. You're going to, you know, people are going to say to you, left, right, centre, be kind to yourself. And you're going to think, what on earth does that even mean? I remember hearing it and thinking, I don't understand. What are you on about? You, you know, like, I could do a whole podcast on this. Essentially, you are in trauma, okay? Your body is in a constant state of high alert, constant stress, and you are going to feel like you are going mad. And you're going to give yourself a real hard time for that. You're going to judge your feelings. You're going to criticize yourself. You're going to feel all the guilt. You're going to think you're getting this all wrong. You're going to get entirely frustrated with how long this takes to work through. All of that stuff. Show yourself some compassion. Treat yourself like your own best friend. It is so 
important. There's another podcast on this that I did, um, cheering you on, I think, um, where, you know, you can just learn how to be your own cheerleader, how to really notice, you know, what you have done, what you have achieved and how well you are doing, because we're always going to look for the things we haven't done. That's how we work. But look, for, look at all the things you have done, you, you know, really just be kind to yourself in your own mind kind words only rest you're going to need so much rest you're probably not sleeping very well and you're going to be exhausted on every single level this is tiredness like you have never ever felt before even more so you know you know like if you've had a baby and you're getting like three hours sleep a night and you're absolutely exhausted like it's worse than that because it just impacts you on every single level. Manage your expectations. You're gonna expect a lot of yourself and you're not gonna be able to reach those expectations because they're completely unrealistic. That was a whole other podcast as well. Expectations versus reality. Go check that one out because that's where you're gonna be giving yourself a really hard time. Be compassionate, listen to your body, walk. Get out in nature and walk. It is so healing, it is so restorative, and it is so soothing. Just listen, listen to the sounds, be present in the moment, and just walk, moving our body. It's so symbolic. It, you know, we have to keep taking those steps. Good food, plenty of water, wrap yourselves in love, let people help you I know this goes against the grain I know we're not used to asking people for help and letting people in but please let everybody do everything for you doesn't matter that you feel like you're being a burden because you're not you have a burden but you are not a burden and let people help you carry that burden for a while until it becomes lighter for you, until you become that little bit more able to carry it in a more positive way, because you will. You're not going to need people's help forever. But you do need it now to ask for it. Let people help you. People actually want to help. They just don't often know how to. Now, this is going to take a lot longer than you want it to or even expect it to. I remember thinking when my husband died, um, six months, six months, I'm going to be feeling much better. It's, you, you know, it's a long time. And at seven months, I was in the doctor's surgery asking for antidepressants and sleeping tablets. I I just hit a brick wall. I, I couldn't cope. It was horrendous. I was withdrawing from everyone around me. I, I just I, I could barely get through my days. And I had two children to look after. So in the first six months, that's like the, the raw, very early days of grief. Now, again, after that time, I thought, well, maybe if I get to the end of a year, it's bound to start feeling better after a year. And I have to say, I found the second year a lot harder than the first year, because at the end of the first year, I was exhausted. I'd, I'd done everything I could to get through that first year thinking, oh, just get through everything, just get through all those firsts. And then you get to the beginning of the second year and there's that realization that this isn't just a one year thing, this is a lifelong thing. And I've got to get through a whole other year of this and I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> like It took everything I've got to get through that year. Now, what am I gonna do? You will, you will get through it. But don't expect it to feel better very quickly. You will have moments where it feels better. You know, I remember Simon died in the September. And I remember in the January of the following year, so only a few months later, going to my um, counsellor. And I, I, was, I was as high as a kite. I was like, this is brilliant. Like, I am so excited. I'm so excited about this year. I'm going to do all these things. Like, I can do what I want, when I want, how I want. I obviously bouncing off the back of Christmas, which was pretty awful, and New Year, and, and thinking, okay, I've got this. This is going to be all right. And um, I, I felt invincible. I felt absolutely invincible. I went and booked myself on a caravan towing course, and I booked holidays. That's <laughs> just like, okay, this isn't so bad. 
doesn't last very long, um, soon crashed back down to earth. And, and you're going to be up and down like a yo-yo. There are going to be days where you feel invincible. You're going to achieve something that you never thought possible. And you're going to think, yes, I am amazing. I've got this. I can do anything. Like, you, you honestly are just going to feel on top of the world at times. And then there are going to be other times when you feel crushed by the world and you won't even be able to get up off the floor some days and it is this constant up and down which is incredibly exhausting but what we tend to do as well is we beat ourselves up when we hit the down we think we're being pathetic and we're wallowing and we shouldn't feel like this and sort yourself out stop being stupid get back up so we criticize ourselves for that and then when we have the highs and we're feeling good and we've achieved something amazing we then oh no no can't no I can't feel like that that's awful what will everyone think of me I'm being disloyal I'm being disrespectful I can't enjoy my life when my husband's dead and we just layer it all and and if we can just learn to accept the feelings and the emotions as they come good bad or indifferent it's going to make your journey a whole lot easier now that's not easy to do and this is what I love to help people with in my programs because understanding that is going to make an a huge difference in your journey a huge difference in your journey because we are terrible at layering our heavy feelings with more heaviness, with more judgment, with more criticism. We just keep pushing ourselves down further and further. And it's awful. And, and we really can reduce so much of our suffering if we work on ourselves. Don't rush anything, you know. Do things when it feels right, when it comes to sorting out clothes and belongings, moving house, selling cars, going on holiday, dating, whatever you want to do or don't want to do, just do it when it feels right for you. There, There's no rush. There's no right or wrong. There's no timeline as to when these things need to have happened by. The only thing I would say, and, and again, another podcast I've done, um, this is like a, a catalog of previous podcasts, isn't it? The um, wedding rings, slippers and toothbrushes talking about our, our person stuff. But I say in that, um, you know, as long as it's not causing you more discomfort, that's okay. But if you get to a point where there's there's things around the house or there's things that you're doing or there's belongings in a certain place that every time you see them, you feel like actually this this isn't bringing me any comfort anymore. This is actually making me feel worse. Maybe that's the time to think about changing things a little bit. But you'll know when that time is right. You will know, you will figure that out. Talk about your person, talk about your feelings, talk about your experience, put all the pictures up. Remember the good times. It's very easy, especially in the very early days, that we, we kind of allow the death to overshadow the life, understandably, because it's just, it's here. It's at the forefront of our minds. It's all we can think about. And, and that does take over. 100%. And that's normal. That's natural. But where you can, talk about the life that you lived together, the experiences that you shared, the memories that you made, because those are the things that are going to warm your heart and those are the things that you want to take forward with you because the the ultimate kind of goal in our grief is that we can remember with more love than pain and it's possible it is so possible like I say it takes a lot longer than you want it to but it happens very gradually over time doing the work but we we want to remember those good times you know sometimes people like to create um, like photo albums, memory books, and 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 write things down of all the things that they've done so they don't forget. Because as time passes, memories do fade. They do. That's life. So you know, like it's it's good to talk about them, to remember them, to write them down, so that you can keep them fresh in your mind. You know, and and have the pictures there to to keep that at the forefront of your mind as well. And every single day. Look for the good in your life because you're going to be noticing a lot of bad. You're going to be feeling very bad. And if every day you can look for the good, whatever that is, 
whether it's a friend or a relative checking up on you, whether it's a comforting warm drink in the morning, whether it's the sun on your face, a bird singing in the trees, a, a local park that brings you some comfort, anything. Look for things that feel good and keep looking and eventually those things will get bigger and brighter and bolder and you will see more of those things. But just start with the little things at the beginning. Anything that brings you some comfort, some joy, that you feel thankful for, recognize those things and just take note and spend some time in that feeling so that it doesn't feel like it's all bad. I hope some of that has helped. I am sending you a whole lot of love and strength. If you would like to know more about the groups that I do, the membership that I have, please do check out my website, karensutton.co.uk. Like I say, everyone and anyone is welcome. It is a fantastic community of people. I just seem to attract the most amazing people. Fills my heart, fills my heart with absolute joy. It really is amazing to watch everybody coming together and finding their way through this because it's tough. It's really tough. But do you know what? You will do it. You are doing it. You are amazing. Never forget that. Never doubt that. Keep doing what you're doing. And just remember, be kind to yourself. Thank you so much for listening and spending this time with me. And I will very much look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.